Invest 95L continues to be the talk of the town, however it does seem to be lagging behind what our previous anticipations looked like in terms of rapid intensification. Today on Weather Center Nazari, I want to discuss a few of the variables that may be impacting his ability to really get going as he travels westward through the main development region and what the rest of the tropical basin looks like because we do seem to be getting a little bit of reprieve out there. We can't let our guard down just yet, however it does seem like the trends look like we're calming down at least for the temporary distant future. Are we beginning to see signs that the 2023 hurricane season, despite being at its peak as of early September, finally give us a second to collect ourselves after the likes of Idalia and Franklin not too long ago? Let's go ahead and find out. Alright ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with episode 20 of Weather Center. Starting off on National Hurricane Center's homepage, you can see our Atlantic chart is finally beginning to clear out. We are no longer a conglomerative mess of circulation after circulation. GERT has diminished back down to a remnant state and Katia was now downgraded to tropical depression status. Both of these storms are in close proximity to features that are going to fully suffocate them over the next 24 to 48 hours and it looks like both GERT finally and Katia will be off our radar for the rest of the 2023 hurricane season. All eyes remain on Invest 95L. In my personal opinion, Invest 95L has been causing quite a bit of trouble on our radar. It has yet to undergo any further cyclogenesis. On satellite, it is looking a bit more impressive with a bit more thunderstorm activity wrapped around all sides of the cyclone. However, we still have yet to reach tropical depression status. Either that or NHC has taken their time highlighting this feature as it churns off to the west-northwest at a pretty fast rate, 20 to 23 miles per hour. It's still situated in our eastern Atlantic region, continuing to move towards our Lesser Antilles, and as we'll see on Windy.com here in a moment, there is some high pressure still situated over the Central Atlantic that I do believe is going to continue to guide him off to the west, at least for the next couple of days. With him moving at such a fast clip, it makes a lot of sense that we'll see a westward track until that high can begin to break down and recede to the north. Moving right along to the Windy overlay, I like to pull this up just to get a big generalized picture of what the weather pattern looks like across much of of North America, South America, and even portions of Western Africa. The Atlantic is looking fairly quiet. We have our two main circulation centers well in the northern latitudes of the Atlantic at this time. The one off to the west is going to be the remnants of Idalia, still jet supported, looking more and more like a mature wave that we'd see typically moving across the United States during winter time. And if you look real closely, there is a bit of a dead zone just to the south of where a warm frontal sector would be analyzed in association with her low pressure center. That is the likes of GERT. GERT is quickly being absorbed by this massive circulation induced by the remnants of Idalia, and that is why I believe we are finally going to say bon voyage to GERT once and for all. Looking just to the south of our North Atlantic high pressure here, this cyclonic spin is Katia, Tropical Depression Katia. Being sandwiched between these two high pressure centers, the sinking air associated with both those anti-cyclones is draining her of her battery, her life support, and it will also be nothing more than a remnant low as she very, very slowly hikes off to the northeast at a whopping four to five miles per hour. Now we turn our eyes to the eastern Atlantic. You can see this little spin, this cyclonic curvature in the winds. That is Invest 95L. He's causing a lot of ruckus staying out there on a lot of our radars, continuing to move off to the west-northwest. And with this central Atlantic high still spinning in place, I anticipate we will see a west-northwest track at least for the next two to three days before hopefully he begins to hike off to the north and northwest, avoiding any kind of major land impact with the lesser Antilles and the greater Antilles of Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and further westward. All in all, though, the Atlantic is looking a lot more quiet than it has in the last two weeks. Nothing significant to really report on at this time. I'm mainly just giving a broad overview of what's out there and what's currently happening in terms of their forward progress. Let's move in a little bit on Invest 95L. Everyone believes this is going to be Lee over the next 24 to 48 hours, even National Hurricane Center having elevated the probabilities of development up to a 90-70 ratio. 70% chance over the next two days, 90% over the next seven days, which is getting closer and closer to a near guaranteed system over the next seven days. On satellite, it's starting to look a lot more impressive, albeit still fairly disorganized, I believe as a result of mid-level dry air still invading the center of circulation. We're seeing some thunderstorm activity kicking off, but you can also see that it wants to kind of peter out as it develops in close proximity to its vortex. So unfortunately, it's not holding on to a tremendous amount of its convective complexes, and I think that's the main reason why we 
haven't had a depression designated with this system yet. Good cyclonic turning in the winds. We are starting to see a bit of a low-level circulation form up and reflect up to the mid-levels of the atmosphere, but still not quite there to warrant a tropical depression status and a forecasted track for the next five to seven days. It is expected to move into a generally conducive environment over the next couple of days and finally get its tropical depression and potentially named storm status as it gets closer to either making its turn to the north or pushing towards our lesser Antilles, especially the northeastern islands. I'll show you that here in a second. Real quick, I mentioned on the National Hurricane Center homepage that we are seeing a bit of a calming trend in our Atlantic region, but if you look closely at these values here, September 13th through September 19th, Climate Prediction Center actually elevates us to above a 40% chance that we will see development somewhere in our eastern Atlantic area, close to that main development source region, and currently with the features we have in place, we are above 20% between September 6th to September 12th. So CPC is actually anticipating we're going to get more active than this. So I would recommend a lot of us here monitoring the weather and obsessing over everything that's out there right now. Kind of take a bit of a back seat for just a little while to collect ourselves and prepare for what could possibly be another round of tremendous tropical activity. Okay, we looked at this yesterday and I wanted to pay closer attention to this large swath of immense dry air across the central portions of the Atlantic. You can see it isn't an enormous influence on Invest 95 center of circulation, but since he's moving at such a rapid pace off in this general direction, I do believe this is going to inhibit any rapid intensification of this system. A lot of our models are still calling for a hurricane before it reaches our Antilles, especially this northeastern segment of them. However, just based off of the track record we have with this hurricane season and the copious amounts of dry air that I'm seeing, particularly in these deep shades of red right through here, this is going to smother any significant thunderstorm activity that will form up in his center and begin to wrap around and really deepen the storm as it moves off to the west. So we'll have to wait and see. All the models, again, are calling for some pretty good intensification over the next five to seven day window, but it remains to be seen just based off of this satellite image alone. I do think he's going to have just a little spot of trouble down the road as he tries to get his act further together and obtain that named storm status. Looking real briefly at what our wind shear component looks like over the Atlantic, you can see that just off the corner of the chart here, this cloud band is our Invest 95L, and pretty much across the Atlantic, until you get closer to our baroclinic remnants of our tropical features to the north, the path ahead looks pretty strong straightforward. So it is a favorable environment in terms of what the upper level winds are doing for this storm. Once he can get away from that dry air and start to really wrap up in of itself and start that deepening trend, we will see Lee finally take shape. There's kind of a bit of channel darkening going on in this general area, and that's indicative of that dry air I showed you on that static water vapor shot. Once he can finally get clear of that and get to the north of the Puerto Rican island, Dominican Republic headed into the Bahamas, unless he takes that rapid north-northeast turn beforehand, that's when I think we'll finally see some really good development out of that storm and we'll see it deepen into a hurricane and maybe even possibly a major hurricane that could be headed towards the Bermuda or the northeastern coastline of the United States. All right, as we get into the back end of episode 20, we are going to go over some of the model data just to get an idea of what the trends and latest information looks like for what features we do have out in the tropical Atlantic. Just off the northeastern shoreline of the United States, this 981 millibar low is the bare tropic remnants of Idalia. Based on what the latest GFS at 12Z is calling for, we are going to continue to see her ravage the north eastern states, providing a little bit in the way of elevated winds and some maybe rainfall along the coastline before our next major bear clinic system, our frontal system here, supported by a 1027 millibar high pressure over the Hudson Bay, can finally evacuate this system from our weather pattern once and for all. If I go back in time to about September 8th at 06Z, you can see that Lee has deepened to a 961 millibar hurricane as he begins to trek closer and closer to our northern Lesser Antilles, but should be well off to the north to provide nothing more than some good surfing action for our northern islands. This trend has been pretty consistent almost amongst all model platforms and it looks like Lee, albeit becoming a major hurricane down the road, should stay far enough away from any major landmass to not pose a sensible threat. As we start getting into the back end, I mean the very back end of the GFS, it looks like the trend has been shifted to the northeastern United States, the Nova Scotia, eastern Canada area as well, that we could see a 960 millibar low a la hurricane 
Hurricane Sandy, Superstorm Sandy from a few years back, impact in the northeast United States. So that's something to be aware of. Yesterday we had a few runs of the GFS that hinted towards a Virginia North Carolina landfall before skirting along the mid-Atlantic northeastern coastline and then evacuating over the North Atlantic, very similar to what Adalia's remnants are doing at this time. So that is something worth noting that we could have another potential impact spot that we have to watch. But again, take that with do with it as you please because this is so far out in the GFS run that I anticipate a lot more wiggling and wobbling, especially as the models attempt to anticipate where the weakness in our high pressure over the Atlantic and when our next frontal system will come in to provide that tunnel, if you will, or that path of escape for Lee as he gets closer and closer to the United States. Switching over to the Canadian model, as I mentioned while we were looking at the GFS, the trend has been that we should dodge our Antilles just off to the north, albeit the Canadian model does want to get this system a little bit closer to the likes of British Virgin Islands, Anguilla, St. Kitts, Montserrat, Antigua, and down as far south as Barbuda, Guadalupe, and Dominica. I do believe we're going to see only residual impacts from this storm because we're on the southern side of this storm, which is typically the weaker side. They shouldn't see too much in the way of impacts as long as it stays off to the north and doesn't wobble down to the south. And then typical of what we saw on the GFS, the Canadian model also wants to hook it to the north away from the coastline before reaching the Bahamas and sad to say kind of turning its sight on the Bermuda Island. If we stay here on the Canadian run, you can see this 1008 millibar low pushing into the Great Lakes towards the northeastern United States. It is occluded at this point. We have our frontal systems draped across the mid-Atlantic states into the southeast, and that, I believe, is going to be our force field from this system. Aloft, I'll use a different color to kind of indicate what we're looking at. At the surface, we have our occluded low with its associated fronts, and in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere, if you use my red ink here, that would be our trough axes creating a very dense barrier for this storm, so it has no choice but to hook back out to sea, and that's why I say take a look at GFS and do with it as you please, because with this long area of lower pressure and troughing affecting the eastern portions of the United States, I don't think it will actually have a chance to make landfall, but time will tell. This is 240 hours out, the very tail end of our 12Z run of the Canadian model. We are still seeing very hopeful projections that it will avoid any kind of major Caribbean action, Bahama action, and southeastern United States, but again, since we're so far out in the future, I have to throw the disclaimer out that I am not an official source. Please stay tuned regularly to NHC and see what they have in terms of what this storm is projected to do, but for the time being, it looks like the latest trends keep Lee away from any major landmass or any kind of major landfall. We'll tread into the ensembles as well to get a big picture idea of exactly what the likelihood of this storm taking a certain track is. I'm using the 0Z GFS right now because we don't have the 12Z run all the way in, and the 12Z Euro has not populated yet to see that far out into the future. If we go out five days from now, you can see a general consensus that some of the model ensembles still want to bring it into our Antilles as a weaker storm, as maybe a tropical depression to a mid-grade tropical storm, before finally having it deep and a little bit more substantially back over Atlantic waters. If we go out to 240 hours out, you can see a really substantial hook off to the north, and that's where a lot of our members want to project a major hurricane going out to sea, becoming nothing more than a fish storm, which is great news, especially if it does reach that major hurricane status. At the back end of the loop, you can see that there are still a very small cluster of members that want to drive it through the Bahamas into the state of Florida, maybe somewhere along the southeastern coastline of Georgia, South Carolina. But again, if you look at the color coding here, 1,000 to 1,010 millibars, I highly doubt that that's what's actually going to happen given the synoptic dynamics we have in play over the country, as well as if it did, we'd have nothing more than a rainmaker at that point, making landfall somewhere in the southeast quadrant of CONUS. Just to give you guys a sense of consistency, I will also rewind back to the 0Z run of the Euro, and we'll take a look at the Euro model's ensemble members. At 180 hours out, you can see a very powerful hurricane out over the central Atlantic waters, posing no threat to any landmass, thankfully. And as we go to the very end of the run, you can see that the GFS and the Euro are in pretty good agreement that we will see a sudden shift in its track from west-northwest to north-northeast, maybe affecting Bermuda down the road as a major hurricane, which could be catastrophic to our folks out there. But you can see that the Euro model wants to keep it away from the eastern coast of the United States, from the likes of Florida all the way up to the likes of Maine, which is not something the GFS was doing, so there is still a bit of discontinuity out there. As we go through time, if we do see this system start to rapidly intensify, I do anticipate we'll see this curvature off to the northeast sooner than later, and that may put Bermuda in its crosshairs, and if it does come ashore or it does impact the island as a Cat 4, maybe borderline Cat 5 because we have seen whispers of that on the latest operational guidance in terms of intensity trends, 
Regardless, it's still going to be a dangerous situation for folks out there. So if I have any viewers watching right now in Bermuda, please keep your eyes out for this storm. Please tune into the channel or your official weather source, but at least keep your eye on this storm because it does look like you could have a Cat 3, if not potentially stronger than that, headed your way if this ensemble trend continues. All right, before we wrap up this episode of Weather Center Nazari, I wanted to shift on over to Weather Prediction Center to take a look at what their future surface analyses looks like because I do believe this is what's going to provide us with that East Coast block and prevent Lee from coming ashore somewhere near the likes of Florida or all the way up the northeastern coastline. If we fast forward to 12Z this week, Wednesday, you can see we have a potent frontal system making its way through the central plains, moving through the Mississippi Valley, or I should say the central Mississippi Valley, moving towards the East Coast. And as we go forward in time to 12Z Friday, there is a pretty strong area of frontal activity along the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states with a very weak stationary front just off the corner of the chart here. And if you go down to 12 Zulu on Monday, thankfully, this is the setup we have preventing Lee from coming inland. Whereas if we had this same setup with Idalia, Central Florida would have definitely had to do battle with her last week as it came ashore over the Big Bend. So that was Central Florida saving grace. So it looks like the Atlantic Basin is finally cooling off for a little bit. We'll have to keep our eyes out for when Invest 95L decides to organize into tropical depression and eventually get a named storm status of Lee and see what he decides to do over the coming days. But for now, let's start headed into our outro. And so folks, we've reached the end of episode 20 of Weather Center Nazario. Time has genuinely flown by over the last few weeks, and I can't believe we are now at episode 20. It feels like just last week I started this channel, and I cannot believe the growth that we've seen over the last two weeks in particular. During my coverage of Hurricane Adalia as she made her way towards the sunshine state of Florida, I cannot believe how many of you guys tuned in, showed some pretty wonderful support, and are continuing to do so even right now. And last night we officially hit a new milestone of 2,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. I feel as if I'm becoming very rhythmic in saying things like this, but I'm very, very grateful for every single one of you who have subscribed, who even drop a like, who have your notifications turned on. Heck, even if you pop open the video and view just all of 30 seconds, I can still say thank you very much for at least tuning in based on what you saw on the surface. Before we officially wrap up and sign out, I do want to announce that tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to be airing the premiere of Tropics Talk here on the YouTube channel. Tonight will be the first official Tropics Talk here on YouTube, so please make sure your notifications are on and be prepared for that. I'm really excited to kick things off and see how many of you want to join in, have a good old conversation, swap some weather stories, and kind of just make sense of what the big picture pattern looks like, not only for the tropics, but all of North America for that. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching. I will see you very soon, and I hope to see you this evening for Tropics. Talk. But until then, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.